with, here we go. So it's very, very slight, but I think, again, the one that has that wind up, as I'm calling it, is just a bit more dramatic. So the point being is this is something that you can do with your snares as well. Uh, You can do with other sounds, but I think it really works well with a snare. And that wind up, by the way, is very, very short. It's not super loud. It just just right on the other side of the snare drum where it hits. All right, let's uh, go ahead and move on to our uh, next point here. I want to talk about a concept that uh, I absolutely love when it comes to creating music, and it's called LCR panning. LCR panning is something I've been a fan of for a long time. It basically makes your sound wider. So when you're listening in headphones and things like that, and by the way, just kind of a disclaimer, if you are listening to like a speakerphone type of scenario here, you may not be able to get the essence of what I'm going to talk about because it does require stereo. So you need headphones or two monitors for you to really get the um, the full fullness of what I'm talking about here. So we're talking about panning in LCR panning specifically. LCR panning basically is extreme panning. So what that means is that you can take an instrument or a sound and pan it all the way left, meaning 100%, or you can take something and pan it all the way right, 100%, Or you can go dead in the middle and have it mono. So there's your C, the the center. So your dead center, LCR, LCR panning. Now, I am now this track does not contain full LCR panning, but there are a few elements in here that are subject to the LCR panning. The reason that I'm bringing this up is that I believe that you can make your track sound wider without the use of any type of plugin. I'm not sure if you've seen in your um, digital audio workstation like a stereo imaging plugin or some type of widening widening plugin. Well, it kind of artificially moves things out to where it feels like bigger and broader and like you're kind of deep inside the mix. A good old fashioned LCR panning technique will do that for you. Again, extreme hard panning left, right. And you can have some things dead center with mono. So what's happening here? Let me play it for you here. I have some percussion that I have used the LCR panning for. See if you can pick it out. I'm going to play it for you real quickly. The track, the song. All right. The sounds are kind of low to be very direct with you, which will be my third point today. But let me isolate the sounds that are panned in extreme in an extreme way uh where are they all right here we go let me play it for you i'm gonna play those sounds only listen carefully because they're kind of low in volume i'll play it hear that so on uh if you have your headphones on the right way (laughs) on the left side you kind of have this clicking sound And then on the right side, you have this hi-hat sound that have a little filter on. But the hi-hat is all the way over to the right, 100%. And then the uh, the clicking sound is all the way over to the left, 100%. So these things do not occupy the same speaker territory or real estate whatsoever. They're in completely different worlds. Let me play it for you one more time. So as a listener, when you're listening in your car and your headphones and when the other music is kind of placed in the center, it gives a wider feel to the overall mix of music. So let me play it in context of the uh, the the whole song here. So listen for those little pieces, if you will, and see how big and broad the track sounds. Okay, and one more thing here. The uh, I mentioned LCR, left, center, right. The thing that's in the center in this instance is the uh, the kick drum. So let me go here and play that for you real fast. 
It has a little reverb on it, so it kind of spreads it just a bit. And I'm going to throw the left and right on here, those sounds, those hard panned instruments. So the rhythm section or the percussion in this particular song, it it's really spread wide. All right. So I think it's a great thing to use. And here's the beauty of LCR panning. I'm just using percussion today as an example. You can use anything. I like to use LCR panning for vocals, maybe have an alto on the far left, maybe have um, a soprano far right. Or you can have, let's say, a rhythm section for your guitar, far left, um, maybe a lead line, far right. Uh, there's a number of applications. Let me show you one more thing that I did with LCR panning today, and it goes back to our snare drum. What I did is I chose two different snare drum sounds, and I put one snare to the far left, and then one snare to the far right here. Let me find it for you. And so before you may have thought that these things are the same and they're actually two different snares, as I mentioned. So let me play those snares for you. Can you hear it? So Probably in the beginning, you may have thought that there's that was just one snare drum sound. There are some multiple snares layered in there, as you saw when I put that one in there that has a reverb. But the basic snare of the song, it's really two snares, a left and a right one. Let me remove one of them. Here's one of the snares. And here's the other. And then together. And then I'm going to kind of build this up here. I'm going to put my little whack sound in there, the little wind up sound. See that? And then I'll put my bigger snare in there that has the uh, the reverb on it. And then you have the whole picture for the snare part of it. The point is, me using that LCR panning, even for the snare drum, and mind you, I use two different sounds, so there's distinction. If you took the same sound and panned it left and panned it right, it's going to wind up sounding like a mono sound. Because the sound left and right, they're way too similar. So mind you, if you're going to use this technique for your snare drum, make sure that you use slightly different snare drum sounds. Or you can slightly move them out of time to where one hits slightly ahead of the other. And it kind of gives you this kind of uh, delayed effect, if you will. But it will, sound, it will sound like a stereo snare if you do it ever so slightly. Again, LCR panning can be used to all of your instrumentation. Uh, again, we're just using the, uh, the percussion today as um, an example of how to get that done. All right. Last uh, thing that I want to touch on today, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, which is uh, the volume. This track here has different um, instruments at different volumes. I believe that, and, and by the way, that's uh, called dynamics, how loudly or how softly something's played. I believe a good musical track or song or what have you should have a mix of high sounds, low sounds. So I want to point out to you the difference in volume with the different uh, instruments here. So take a listen one more time with everything. What's the loudest sound in this song? And think about the lowest sound. Let me play it back for you one more time. So to my ear, that snare drum sound or the collection of sounds that kind of comprise that uh, snare drum section, if you will, that's the thing that kind of whacks you right in the face. Meanwhile, as we heard earlier, that little clicking sound and that hi-hat sound that's panned heart left, heart right, it's lower. Here's the crazy thing. Because they are panned left and right, and this is kind of my bonus thing for you here, they're still audible. They're very, very low in volume, but because the hi-hat is very uh, far, to the, uh, far to the one side and the clicking sound is far to the other side, even though the snare drum is really smacking you in the face, those other smaller or lower volume elements lower volume elements, if I can talk today, they're still audible. Listen again. Do 
You hear that? So the, the point is, if you can combine the LCR panning and you can use that in tandem or with your volume, you create a song that has a lot more depth. The point is, as you're playing around with your music and going through some different ideas, don't be afraid of taking a few instruments and dragging the volume all the way down to the point where they may not feel like they're up front and audible. But again, if you use the panning in addition to dragging the volume down, you can still cause it to be heard in the mix. And that way, your song overall will not sound muddy, sound junky and too full and too complicated. So using proper volume is an incredible way of creating depth and interest in your music. And mind you, in the song, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening in the middle, mainly that little piano sound. Um, at some point in time, I have like a, a synthesized bass that drops in on the second half of the song. So there's a lot going on there, but to me, it doesn't really feel like it. It seems like everything has its place. All right, let's listen one final time. Here we go. Yo, there it is. So take some time, play around with those ideas on your own. Use that wind up sound to, to make your snares hit harder. Use LCR panning. I absolutely love it, man. Just just mess around with your tracks. Take whatever you have right now and just take your panning knob and just kind of play around and see what kind of different interesting placements you can um, give to certain instrumentation in your tracks. And lastly, go back to volume. See what's crowding your sound. Is there something in the middle that's just kind of too junky? Or you can think on the opposite side. What do you absolutely want to put into the face of the listener? Do you want to have your bass really thumping? Or do you want to have your snare just hitting folks really hard? Or do you want to have uh, a synth that's just cutting through? Volume will do that for you. And then challenge yourself to drag other things way, way, way back in the mix and then have some things in between. And you're going to have music that is more complete, wider, and uh, more interesting overall. And when you do, man, you'll be more successful at this music game. Yo, I appreciate you tuning in to the episode today. Make sure you go over to our main site where you can hear those other episodes. Check us out at Success with music.com again that is success with music.com man make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that we can keep the love going and if you can do us one better and provide a sweet review that would be amazing yo get at us next episode Ten dollars a gas won't fill the tank no this just gets old i know there's gotta be a better way for me in this life that is my dream